Hey there, welcome to my urban homestead. Down here in Florida, there's so much going on in spring. I'm so excited to share it with you because today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you on a spring garden tour and we're gonna do for the first time on this channel, the whole thing. I mean, normally I just try to show you one part or you know, like I'll just focus on native plants or butterfly gardens or vegetable gardens. But today I just, I couldn't just do one. I had to show it all. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take you from the front to the back to the sides. We're gonna look at vegetables, native flowers, butterfly plants, exotic flowers, just the whole thing. And I hope you enjoy it because this is what gardening in Florida is like in April. So come join me, let's go. How about flowers first? Because there's some gorgeous flowers going on. Now, one of the things that I think I've mentioned in some other videos, so one of the things that will flower a lot in the future is this tree. This is a Ponciana. They get gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous red flowers. This one's probably not old enough to start getting flowers this year, but I'm hoping in the next like two to three years, we should start getting, this will be covered, covered in red flowers. It's not native to my home state, it is native to Madagascar, but it is still just a pretty, pretty flowering tree. And then when it comes to other major flowering trees in the front yard, we have the Castia fistula, also too young to start uh, flowering yet, also known as the golden shower tree. Just imagine like bunches of grapes, but with yellow flowers. That's what that's gonna end up having. And then hiding back here is a big old plumeria, which they basically go and they look like sticks all winter but this one's a big old one my son loves climbing it and I, I just I don't really see very often ones this big usually the people have little ones but this one's big 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 and those are our big flowering trees and I'm really excited about because in the future we're gonna have yellow and red and then that one has pinkish yellow flowers and in the back we have a jacaranda so that'll be purple and this is just gonna be just a ton of color but let's move into some of the other flowers so we've got, of course, our butterfly garden, which is just looking gorgeous. We have the Coreopsis leavenworthi, which is native to my home state. Blanket flower. Then you've got these little purplish flowers here. These are beach verbena, which is native. Down in here, we have our twin flower, which is a host plant to the buckeye, common buckeye butterfly, which is really cute. And then we've got sunshine mimosa, which I don't see any flowers at the moment. They might have all gotten spent, but they're like little powder puffs. They're really cute. So they just kind of pop up every now and then. And they're also part of my little experiment over here with the vegetable garden. Oh, and what's really cool, which a lot of people don't get to see this with blanket flowers, is they just see the petals, is that when it goes and it flowers again. Isn't that neat? Super pretty. So a lot of people just think of it like this, but no you get this too. And that's how they go get the nectar, all our little butterflies and bees. But let's go look at some more flowers. Oh, right. So I made a second butterfly garden up front. Actually, this whole thing's basically like a butterfly garden, but this is a very much dedicated native butterfly garden area again. So what I've done here is this is, let's call it a, monarch milkweed madness because i put in a lot of milkweed so all these little sticks here this is our native pink swamp milkweed oh look a little skipper and um then we've got our black eyed susans which are native this plant right here that's a giant ironweed that is going to get eight to 12 feet tall can you imagine that eight to 12 feet tall up against this pine and then it'll have these gorgeous purple flowers and then in between, we've got our native porterweed, which is a low ground cover. Just got these really pretty flowers. That, can you guys see those? Of course, the flowers are supposed to be edible, I've heard. Very pretty. What else did I put in here? Oh, and more Coreopsis leavenworthi, just because I love, I just love that plant. It's so pretty. So we actually put 10 pink swamp milkweeds in here. And we've had a round of caterpillars. Now there's a bunch of eggs on them, but we're waiting for our next set. And what was great about it when we had the first set is they actually liked hanging out underneath the Black Eyed Susans and they would use the porterweed as shelter. And then down here, I relocated white swamp milkweed. These are really tiny plants. They don't get much bigger than this. And that's the problem is that 
you have enough big plants around them and they'll quickly get overwhelmed, which is what I had. It's uh, the sword fern that's native to Florida, which is gonna overtake them. So I put them right here, because there's just this teeny tiny strip anyways. So it'll be easy for me to keep track of them, but also um, they have their own little space and they'll be happy there. And especially because they're swamp milkweed, the water does run off this sidewalk and will hit there and kind of get a little boggy for them. Oh, aren't these flowers just happy? Happy, happy, happy. And one of the things you can see that I'm doing is I'm mixing a lot of different colors. So we've got the yellows here, we'll have the pink with this pink swamp milkweed, the white on the back side, purple with the iron weed, and then you got this bluish purple with our porter weed. Lots of colors, lots of shapes for our, our butterflies. Just bringing them in, bringing them in. So continuing on our flower journey, I'll come back to that because we're gonna go that way in a second, is we've got our Pride of Barbados. So remember I was mentioning that that Ponciana tree. This is called Dwarf Ponciana. They are not the same plant. Because while that is from Madagascar, this one is known as the Pride of Barbados. But they have a really similar flower. So if you want an idea of what Poncianas would look like, they look like this. They look pretty. Oh, so pretty. I really enjoy this, and the butterflies really enjoy this plant too. The next up is firebush. This is our native firebush. This one's a little bit smaller. This one's huge. Butterflies and bees on this all day long. All day long. So we've been seeing a lot of giant swallowtails, monarchs, sulfurs, gulf fritillaries, and of course buzz buzz bee. And here I've got Cleodundrum glowery bower. This is from my neighbor. He calls them bloomers. It's really sweet. Um, but he has them all in his backyard, so he gave me some, and I just put them there for now. I really don't know much about them, but they're pretty. I really just love coral red flowers. I feel like it's very Florida. And then here's our Cassia Fistula. The Cassia Fistulas right now, I have neighbors who have these too. They just all kind of look a little sad at the moment. But that's okay. Native to Thailand, um, they are not one of our native Cassias. But my plan is, sneaky sneaky, is to remove this uh, was this Linguestrum japonica, and then put one of our native cassias in this corner. But I wanted to wait till this was bigger since this provides shade. So once this is providing a bit more shade, that can go, and then we can have more natives here in the corner. And then if you've been wondering what these pretty, pretty, pretty purple flowers are, this is the Mexican petunia. Mexican petunia, I have to tell you, is invasive to the state of Florida. You can buy sterile versions from the store. Sometimes you actually have, can buy not sterile versions from the store. But you gotta watch out, because even if they're sterile and they don't produce seeds, they will, they, they just, they spread. And I'll, I'll tell you, let me give you an idea of how much they spread. This was one tiny plant here and here, and now this whole area is filled with them. Thank goodness I have a sidewalk so they can't get out of here. But if I didn't, I probably would have been pulling them earlier. But since I've got enough projects to do, <laughs> I'll leave them for now. The bees do like them, the butterflies like them, so we'll stay for right now. And that's the thing when you have invasive species that your wildlife is using. You don't want to just take them out just to take them out and then have nothing left for your wildlife because that's not really helping the cause. So I don't have a plan really for this area yet. So for right now, I'm just um, gonna leave them. I've been starting to throw in some tropical sage, which we'll show you in the back in a minute. Oh, here's a native Cosmo. Not native to Florida, but it is native to the United States. And then, I always forget what these red plants are called. I always call them red sisters, because that's the breed, or the cultivar. Hello. Hello, all my golf fritillaries. But yeah, so they're... <laughs> Um, so I always forget what those are called, but they're there. And so I think I've hit most of the flowers up front. Oh, of course we've got doom sunflower. Cut this one back. It was spilling up and over the box hedge, which was super pretty. Um, but it's been cut back a bit and we're gonna let it spread again so that we can kind of keep that circular shape a little bit around the lamppost. And let's move into the things you can eat, yay! So of course we've got our vegetable garden in the middle and we've got our tropical plants on either side. So we got the papaya here, there it is. 
papaya there and of course can you see this papaya over here do you see how big this thing is all the way up to here that's one year old and it's got to be 20 20 feet tall easily easily and it has already produced 90 pounds of papaya this year insane my husband's like what are we gonna do with this papaya and there's another papaya right there <laughs> we're gonna probably end up with 100 pounds of papaya by summer oh my gosh we're eating a lot of papaya in everything smoothies stir fries curries I don't know just everything everything is papaya right now because there's just so much coming in and then of course we have our grand name bananas that one bunch is just still hanging out there it has not finished uh, not growing that's not the word um, ripening up yet so it's just hanging out and I'll let it keep hanging out until it's ready I pulled a couple bad move they look like they're gonna go bad because they weren't for these I guess had to grow a lot more than I realized so so we'll wait just waiting banana waiting on you then also okay other edibles before we get to the arches and the middle section of course we've got our sweet potatoes all in here these grow all year round here in Florida so I use them as a ground cover the bees love and the butterflies actually you know who loves this the most golf fritillaries and, oh I guess monarchs too today um, but they just love sitting on the leaves just kind of cool I didn't really know they'd like them that much but yeah they just hang out there. Um, I'm gonna let the sweet potatoes spread back in this area as we head into summer. They'll be really happy. Um, and then of course I have some sunflowers that have fallen over right there. I'm gonna take the seeds, I'm just gonna spread them in here so that by next year we'll just have lots and lots and lots and lots of sunflowers because they're pretty. And then I don't think, did I mention the desert rose? Yes, we've got a desert rose. That thing is gorgeous. We did not buy that. That was left by the previous owners, I'm assuming because it's just, it's huge. It's literally huge. This thing, oh, I remember when we had to move it inside for Hurricane Irma, 50, 75 pounds. This thing is ginormously huge, but the flowers, oh my gosh. I mean, can you really? Just so pretty, so pretty. Okay, let's talk the vegetable garden. Oh my goodness, I'm super psyched. I am so excited for this. So through the winter, right, we had some fertility issues with the soil because stuff was trying to break down. Now we have, oh, hi butterflies. Okay, just keep flying around, you do you. Um, we just had some different issues, then plants kind of labored a bit, and then I had some plants take off, but we really just never got the full coverage. But we've got it out, we figured it out. <laughs> So this tomato plant, the reason it's so much bigger is because actually this was planted in fall last year and it was one of those plants that just kind of, it just sat there like this big all summer. And that's the thing is sometimes you never know. Just sat there, sat there, sat there, sat there and then March came and whoosh, here it goes. And tomatoes, tomatoes everywhere. So we just got those all nice and going. And then what we did is that we watched four different types of bean plants that we put in and the Cherokee Trail Tears, the black beans, did the best. So what we did is of the black beans we harvested, we have replanted all these arches with that so that they can go and cover, 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 cover. Then I've got tomato plants already started. So you can see tomato, 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 tomato. There's another tomato over there. Um, there's also some tomato cuttings mixed in. I've got more tomatoes started on the side of the house. So these, and then I've got cucumbers started on the side of the house these things are going to be covered my plan is that come the rest of spring these are going to be covered the whole time and i'm really excited for it and the metal bed this was fun so i've grown onions from scraps before but I did the thing where you put it in, they start to grow, and then you split the bulbs and then replant them. I did not split them this year. So I just wanted to see what would happen. And they just kept growing. Now maybe they aren't gonna get as big, I'm not sure, we'll see. But way easier, cut a whole step out. So we've got all these little onion bulbs, all from scraps, super excited about that. Behind that, we've got garlic. The garlic is, is growing. 
I don't know if it's good, but it's there. And in the middle, we've got pepper plants, but we've got, of course, the lettuce. Oh my gosh, big producer. I think we've gotten almost 20 pounds of lettuce so far this year, but we're coming to the end of the season and you can see they're all starting to want to bolt because of the heat. Um, so we're gonna do kind of our last rounds of harvest this coming weeks, and then I'm gonna actually let some bolt because these did, this was uh, romaine lettuce and then this butter crunch lettuce, both did phenomenal. So now that they've gone through a whole season, I'll grab some seeds and replant them this coming winter, and then we'll get lots more lettuce. Now let's go onward. So you just saw the big, big chunk, but we've got more to see. And I don't think I've shown you all these before, but I planted, these are our native blueberries. So I've got them going. They're super cute. I love these. Look at how pretty the flat these are. I feel like while most blueberries, which are native to the United States, um, they kind of have a layer look. These stay really low. I think what are these called? Darwin blueberries or scrub blueberries is what I call them. Um, they get really teeny tiny blueberries, but they're just, I think they're just pretty. They've got this like very silvery look. This, oh, this is pretty. Pretty, 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 pretty. This is our jasmine trellis. Oh, so pretty. It smells gorgeous right now. Oh my gosh. If you can have this type of jasmine, man, powerhouse. Powerhouse for smell, evergreen all throughout the year. The only sad thing is that, okay, this was put on an arch by the previous owners and this arch has totally rotted out. Boo! But I put some T-posts in, latched it on, which is exciting. And then once this is done flowering, probably summer into fall, we will take out that arch, cut it way back, and then put in a cattle panel to try to redo the arch area. The berry trees are huge and they're dumping lots of mulberries all over the ground. We've already gotten 14 pounds of mulberries in here. It's a lot, like it's a lot, a lot. I think we harvested two pounds just yesterday. So this area, it makes a lot of food. Uh, we've got, of course, our grand name banana, same as out front. Actually, this is the mommy to the ones out front and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Ooh, look at all these mulberries. These are small ones. This one, this mulberry tree, which is super cramped, makes smaller mulberries. The one behind it makes a lot. Oh, here's my little mini arch trellises over here. Same thing over here, cabbage worm. The cauliflower, I'm not doing cauliflower again. It did not do well. Uh, it might be me, it might be it, it might be both of us. Maybe we're just not meant to be in a relationship. It's okay, I don't mind. We don't eat that much cauliflower to make it worth it anyways. Over here, we've got starts, cucumbers. These are from tomato cuttings, which I think you're gonna see you saw part of the video or you're gonna see video, whichever, but those are the cuttings, they're doing great. These are tomatoes for the arches out front, more tomatoes. Some of them will go on these ones, some of them will go somewhere else. Carrots. Oh, okay, well you can just see mulberries, mulberry, mulberry, mulberry. So this is an ever-bearing mulberry. Um, I think it's native to the Illinois region if I remember from the card. And here's the thing about mulberries, don't put them in a place where you don't wanna get your feet stained because they will stain things. And my son yesterday, he was stomping the mulberries that fell on the ground and said he was making jam. So that is our mini food forest. And now we shall head into the backyard. backyard which I usually don't show you all probably because it's just filled with grass so it's not as exciting <laughs> but there is some really pretty things happening right now like the gardenias oh are they not gorgeous they smell gorgeous I just love I think it's gardenias jasmine citrus flowers they all have that I don't know what that smell is but it's so pretty so this is the time of year for gardenias and aren't they pretty oh look at these flowers so pretty so pretty, smell pretty. Which, if you were wondering, most of these palms are Rica palms, not this one right here. I don't know what these are, but these are all Rica palms. The Rica palms, I think, are native to Madagascar. They're actually, uh, if I remember correctly, they are endangered there. Not in Florida. There's lots of them here, so if they ever need them back, 
There you go. And they spread a lot. You get the flowers like this. This is the flowers. These will open up. The bees will love them. And once they start dropping their seeds, I've got lots of mini, mini areca palms all back there. But what I do like about them is when you do have to prune them, you can kind of use this like bamboo. I've used this to edge vegetable beds instead of buying wood. You can just use these instead. So food for thought. Think about that too. We've got more native firebush propagated from cuttings and just stuck in the ground. Oh, here's that tropical sage. This is what I want to spread more of up front in that bed. They're so pretty. Butterflies love this. Actually, hopefully I got some footage of it, but the butterflies are usually out here in the morning when the sun's hitting it nice and full, right about like nine or 10 o'clock. Oh, huh, there you go, there was one. So uh, they're all in here. These are of course crotons, non-native type. I really like these. They're pretty because they've got this kind of like spotted paint that's been thrown on them. And depending on how much sun or shade they get, and how mature the leaves are, they change colors. So I just think they're cool. That tree right there, which looks very sad at the moment, is a jacaranda, which I think is native to Brazil. We get beautiful trumpet purplish light blue flowers. And then here's the orchid stand. I'm not good at orchids, y'all. For all of you who are good at orchids and feel, I have friends who are good at orchids. Isabel, who's good at orchids, and she's like, it's not that big of a deal. It's a big deal. See, these never flower. I don't know why but I also don't really spend any effort on trying to figure out why. So if you're good at orchids, understand that I appreciate your ability to grow and flower those plants. I just don't. But I have this one and it flowers and it's pretty. This was a gift from Moses and it's so nice and it flowers every year and I literally do nothing for it. It just sits here and it does its thing. Um, of course we have more hibiscus. Here is a type that has white with a red center, which I think is super pretty. And then we have a carambola, also known as a star fruit. Let's put out a little bit of star fruiting, not a lot. More hibiscuses, looks like they haven't set flowers. Ah, uh, my nemesis, sword fern. I know someone's gonna tell me this is an invasive species. There is an invasive species and they look almost identical. The only way you can tell is by pulling them and looking for the little tuber balls on them underground. I've pulled a bunch of this and no, it doesn't have it. So it is native, but native can still be annoying. And this is annoying because it just fills in everywhere. And then I have my orange tree, my poor orange tree. It definitely has some citrus greening, but it's still, it's still going. This is of course yellow exora. The butterflies and the bees do like this. And versus like the pink and the coral, I don't usually see them fruit, but the yellow ones do fruit. So you will see more and more of those. More red sisters, whatever they're called. And then gardenias. Gardenia, gardenias. Oh, they're so pretty. Super, super pretty. I mean, is that not gorgeous? There's some pink hibiscus, like a nice, pretty, fuchsia e pink right back here. Uh, what else? Anything exciting? Ugh, there's some invasive bitter melon back there. If you can find it, yay for you. Oh, but what's exciting is this, if you guys heard me talk about native kooka melon, this is the kooka melon. I have not been able to get it out yet. I'm waiting for it to fruit. Because last time I found it, I ate the fruit because I wanted to see what it tasted like. Bad move because then I didn't have any seeds to go move it to a place I actually wanted. All right, we're heading to the side yard. Okay, along this side of the house, why you've never really seen it? It's a boring hedge line. And then, ooh, look at the native yard! Yay! So our beauty berries, do you remember how small they were? So tiny, and now look at them. They're doing what we were hoping, which was shading this wall. Well, not yet, because the sun's not hitting yet, but like for real, yay. And then we got our scorpion tails down here, which are all native. 
And then we've got our native lantanas down here. And then of course our blue, mo blue ocean morning glories, which have been gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And if you're new to gardening in Florida and need help with when to plant things, go ahead and check out wildfloridian.net slash calendar for your free seasonal gardening calendar. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.